Hello and welcome to another SuperFit workout video. This workout is a wrist easy workout, takes the pressure off the wrists and has been requested by Vanessa who follows me on Instagram. Thanks very much for the request Vanessa. All of the exercises, the nine exercises in this sequence, are going to be easy on the wrists. The first two exercises do involve weight bearing through the hands, but we're going to do it on the fists to take the pressure off the wrists. But then the next seven involve weight bearing on mainly on forearms, which does take the elbow joint out and will only work certain upper limb muscles, but you'll still get a chest, back, shoulder, and core workout if you follow this sequence. If you notice that my lips don't correspond with the words, it's because I've had to do a voiceover for this video because the background noise during filming um, disturbed uh, my instructions. First exercise is a modified press up. You can see me here in position resting on my knees and on my arms, but resting on the fists. With the thumbs facing forwards, I've got a prison press up form going on. If I change the configuration to knuckles forwards, I've got a standard press up form during the exercise. That's a modified press up. It's a bit more tricky on the fists than on hands. You could start with a modified press up like I'm demonstrating here, or you can go into a full press up position. So that's a standard form, the elbow's going out to the side, and then this is a prison press up form with the thumbs facing forwards. Second exercise is also going to utilize fist as the weight bearing component of the upper limb. And this is a tricep dip. Knees bent, resting on heels, pelvis up, resting on fists, then the elbows. If you keep your pelvis up, then you're going to have enough freedom to move. You can see me changing the angulation of my hands. With the first angulation, my elbows moving backwards when I have my thumbs facing forwards. And in this angulation with knuckles forwards, you can see the elbows going out to the side. Here I am finishing off with the thumbs facing forwards again and the elbows going backwards. They're variations, they're, it's, they're basically the same exercise with slight variation. You can utilize one or the other or mix it up and do a set of each. Next exercise is going to use a half plank. A half plank resting on forearms and toes. And this is the exercise. It's a held position, just like full plank. And you can see now, you can see there that I dropped down into my knee. So you can do modified half plank or full half plank. So full half plank, toes and forearms, modified half plank, knees and forearms, and then touch with the mat or the ground. Next exercise is going to utilize half plank again, resting on forearms and toes. And then I'm going to lift an arm off and reach forward. You will see a little shift in my body position as I weight bear on one forearm only. So I'm trying to keep my pelvis still and not let it tip one side or the other or push up in the air or drop down to the mat. You could do this off your knees and forearms as well if full half plank position is too difficult. The next exercise utilizes half plank again, but this time I'm going to take my arms out one at a time to the side. Again, you see a little shift of my body weight across to the supporting forearm. But as before, I'm trying to keep my pelvis in the middle as I lift, looking down, head nice and relaxed. Can modify this position to rest on the knees and forearms. So modified half plank rather than full half plank. Another exercise starting in half plank. This time, rather than moving the arms, I'm going to move my lower limbs forwards and stick my pelvis up in the air so I end up in a modified downward dog position and then walk back out 
to half length. Back into modified downward dog. Back out to half plank. I'm just showing the difference between doing it in full plank. A little bit more room for manoeuvre. It's the difference between the two. Again, we're going to use half plank position to start this exercise in. So the movement then comes from shoulders and ankles as I soar backwards and forwards. Half plank, rock backwards and rock forwards. Try not to stick my pelvis up too high. I'm trying to rock at the ankles and the shoulders. So half plank soar. This is another plank position, but this time it's a half side plank. So I'm still going to be resting on my forearm, but now the outer border of the lower foot. Starting off on the ground, then a push up, and the other hand goes out and up towards the sky. You hold, and you can see I'm indicating where I'm working around the left shoulder and the left obliques. You can also start this from half plank, rotate round into half side plank. Rotate back into half plank and then rotate round the other way into half side plank. So it can either be a position that you hold just in half side plank or you can utilize the variation where you move from one side to the other through half plank. This is another half plank exercise, but it's reverse half plank. So rather than looking down, I'm looking up this time, but I'm still resting on my forearms, so the wrists still nice and relaxed. Resting on my heels as well, and I push my pelvis up. If I wasn't looking at the screen and talking, my head would be back here a little bit. And then leg lift whilst in reverse half plank. This is quite a tricky exercise. If you find it difficult, just get into the static position first, build up some strength in that position, and then you can progress to the leg lifts. Thank you again, Vanessa, for requesting this video. And hopefully it gives you some options to take the pressure off the wrist if you find it difficult to do upper limb and core exercises resting on your hands. But do remember you've taken the elbow joint out of the upper limb motion so only it will miss out some muscle groups in the upper limb if you only do this workout. And you can use other bits of equipment like TheraBand, resistance banding, or dumbbells to exercise the upper limb without putting too much pressure on the wrists. I deliberately use minimal equipment for this. If you start this program and you, and you haven't done anything like this before, then start with one set of each, but work to fatigue in each set. Now fatigue here is contraction fatigue, it's the kind of fatigue that goes very quickly when you stop. But when you get to the, the last repetition, it should be so hard that you can still perform it with good form and good technique. But you know that if you, do a, if you did another one, you would lose your form and technique, which you definitely don't want. And you can build up more sets over four to six weeks. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.